what about foods? Are there any foods that we can eat or other strategies to optimize natural melatonin production? So the one, one thing that will consistently destroy sleep quality, I'd say maybe even more than anything else, is going to bed with a full belly. And I've seen that with myself. I've seen that with clients. I mean, ask anybody. Like, If you have a big meal, I'd say within two hours of going to bed, yeah. your sleep is 100% compromised. Ideally, I would say three hours before. And some people report like they get even better sleep if they you know, it's a four hour gap or a five hour gap between your last meal and going to bed. That's what I've personally noticed is the further away from bedtime that I eat, the better sleep that I get. And this is confirmed with my whoop and aura data. And I interviewed a, a sleep expert on my podcast a while ago. And this was his like number one hack was to eat as far away from bedtime as possible. Cause it really does ruin the quality of sleep. Yeah. And food is another circadian signal. So if you're traveling, let, let's just talk about jet, jet lag really quickly. Here's yeah. a really simple, highly effective jet lag protocol. And this is more like if you're going to Europe, like going to Europe um, this summer, and I was able to just avoid jet lag completely. So one is like on the plane, let's say you're flying overseas. You want to time your melatonin and your sleep breakthrough dosage, which by the way, sleep breakthroughs is awesome for sleeping on planes. Uh, dream optimizer, sleep breakthrough, you're, you're going to sleep. So I would time it based on when I was planning on waking up where I landed. So again, I'm starting the circadian, you know, rewiring in the plane. Mm -hmm. Typically it's maybe a 10, 10 hour flight, eight hour flight. So that's the first hack. Second is again, upon awakening sunlight to your eyes, but also a huge breakfast and a workout, but a breakfast, a big breakfast is a major signal to again, start your day. And ideally it's better to, and there's some really interesting new research on time restricted eating and kind of front loading your calories earlier in the day. And it seems that for health purposes, it's better. So I think for sleep, it's definitely better, but let's talk about what you can take or, or drink before bed that will enhance your sleep. So serotonin is a precursor, which means it's a building block for melatonin. So anything that increases serotonin is a good move. It's a good idea. Carbohydrates naturally increase serotonin. So a lot of people, and Tim Ferriss has been saying this for a long time, if you take a teaspoon of honey before bed, he reports getting much better sleep. And again, in my opinion, the mechanism there is simply the honey increasing the serotonin in the brain, which then becomes a precursor to the melatonin. So that's a power move. Also, like when I do three day fast and I've, and I've tested this many times, if I have about 10 to 15 grams of carbs before bed, I'll sleep a lot better. I find that as if I'm like on day two or day three of a fast, my sleep gets shorter and shorter. And, you know, just having like 10, 10, 15 grams of carbohydrates before bed, completely changes that. Am I breaking the autophagy a little bit? Maybe, but I like getting good sleep. So there's some things now, amino acids will be digested very quickly. It's about 30 minutes. So if, if somebody's really concerned, like somebody, somebody works out late in the evening, which is not ideal, no. but they want to, to drink something to help you know them recover from their workout. Uh, amino acids is the way to go, not protein, like just straight up aminos. And T talking about aminos, in my opinion, the number one amino for great sleep is glycine. Mm -hmm. So glycine will help lower your body temp. It actually will push, help push the blood to your extremities. So back to temperature, we, we talk more about temp, but glycine is phenomenal for that. Glycine has been shown to improve REM. And here's my favorite feature of glycine. And by the way, when we were formulating sleep breakthrough, our goals were fall asleep fast, stay asleep. But here was the challenging one. We wanted to build something where when you woke up, you felt refreshed, mm. you felt rejuvenated. And that's where the challenging, the challenges were because there was a lot of sleep molecules that did number one and two you fall asleep, you might stay asleep, but you'd wake up feeling hungover or drowsy or groggy, or you just felt tired. So the glycine has been shown in the research that when people have suboptimal amounts of sleep, they will feel much better the next day. And the thing I'm noticing with the glycine, 
is that it seems to be rejuvenating me over time. I've noticed that, that I'm getting a, a new gear specifically later in the day and it's awesome. So glycine is an incredible amino acid for health and it's phenomenal for sleep. So three grams is, is what we use in sleep breakthrough. Another amino acid is L-theanine. L-theanine has been my go-to sleep molecule for probably about six years. What's great about it is your body never adapts. It always works and it promotes relaxation without drowsiness, which is again, one of our key goals. Of course, people that are familiar with L-theanine know that it's typically derived from green tea. And the reason green tea is a much smoother caffeine ride compared to coffee is that it just helps counter the, it, first of all, it elongates the caffeine effect. It diminishes the spikiness of it. And it's just an improvement. So we use a lot of L-theanine in some of the Utopia products as well. It's great. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this clip, check out the full episode on the Captain's Lifestyle Podcast. Also check the description for links to discounts on the best sleep supplements that I personally use and recommend.